say hallelujah. Yes, there are many things that may hinder us this morning, but when we know that this is the Lord's day, we're able to be in this place and expect great things from our Lord Jesus Christ. As we will continue to have our series about our study on the Egypt of Canaan, let us know more how God will continually lead His people as they started their journey from Egypt. Our passage this morning or our message is entitled, Overcoming the Amalekites Through Prayer. This day, they will face a battle. And how are they going to overcome with our topic? We will note that is through prayer as we'll be reading our passage in the book of Exodus chapter 17 from verses 8 until 16. Congregational reading responsively. I'll be reading the first eight. The congregation will read the verse 9 responsibly until verse 8. 16. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Verse 9. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up as on one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered, and make sure that Joshua hears it. Because I will completely blot out the memory of Amalek under heaven. Altogether, he said, For hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. The Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. Amen. The word of God, let us first pray. Lord, maming sanpay, salamat na ting alda ng intindyo kanyami. And as we have song, sing songs to you declaring that you are our victory, this moment as we listen to your words, God, prepare our heart, open our spiritual ears, our minds, O Lord God, that through your word we will be strengthened again and we can face our challenges in our life, O God. And through your word, this will be our spiritual supply, Lord, that will continually change us from glory to glory. Be in our midst this morning. Holy Spirit, be our teacher. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With the passage that we have read, it is a familiar story. Might be nga nadengagan tayo. Amo tayo ding story. Reenact tayo with the story. The Moses is praying and here comes the two men, Aaron and Hur, holding up the hand of Moses as kunada day labanan kat almost manunga oras kunana pa till sunset. So imagine that battle is not only two hours battle, three hours, but from morning until until sunset, he was able. Kaya yu bang nakangato ti imayu from agsapa ing gana malum? Narigat. But in here we can we will be studying, knowing the story of the Israelites as they will face again as we go back with the from the first story. As Abraham was called from Ur of Chaldeans, God sent Abraham to Canaan for a great purpose. He arrived in Canaan when he was 75 years old, received the Abrahamic covenant. What is that? That was the prophecy that later these Israelites will be in a foreign country that is in Egypt and they will be enslaved for 400 years. And after that, they will be back, they will be back or return to this land that what is that land? Land of Canaan because that was the land promised and was given to them. And this happened when Joseph was started to enter that Egypt because his brothers sold him. And there was a famine in Canaan. So his father Jacob went down to Egypt. There were 70 families who went down and entered Egypt. And when they were in that place of Egypt, 
For first 30 years, they have a good life. They are not under the slave of Egyptians. But after Joseph died for almost 400 years, the, their miserable life is started with that place in that time. So for almost 400 years, they biagdakat narigat. They don't have a joyful moment. They really work hard. They were slave of the, of the Egyptians. And after 430 years, they were able to exit as first they need to take the past over. That past over, it gives them a new beginning. Why new beginning? Because as they move out from Egypt, and they, they will move or they will go in the place of the desert. However, the question that we're looking is that God did not give message to Abraham that Abraham, these Israelites will stay in the desert for 40 years. No. Only God said, you will live in the Egypt for 430 years, but God did not tell anything to Abraham that these Israelites will also need to stay in the desert for about 40 years. Remembering the three ways from promises to Canaan, as they move out from Egypt, they need to take these three ways. What is the first way? PowerPoint. Okay. The three ways, the way of Philistine, they can arrive in Canaan for almost 11 days, but God did not allow these Israelites to take this land. Another way, the way to sure, and God did not allow them again to take that. They can arrive in that place for almost a month. However, God chose the longest okay, way for the, for the Israelites to take. That was the way to Mount Seir. We have studied before if they need to take the five stations for them to arrive in that place of Canaan. In this place of the desert, it was a place for them to be sanctified. That place is a very important for them so that they will be sanctified, purified in their Christian life. Same with us today. We need to be sanctified to be purified. Amen? When we know our Lord Jesus Christ, it's not a total nga all our old nature was gone. But our all these sinful natures, still we have. That's why this morning we'll be looking on that. But before that, with the five station of the Israelites, they need to take it. The first station that they need to pass, it was the place of Etham. In the place of Etham, they had experienced the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. The pillar of cloud, it is the word of God today. And the pillar of fire, it is the Holy Spirit. We need these two things in our Christian life today. That's why we are here to listen to God's word. Through the word of God, this will guide us in our spiritual life. But before they need to pass to, okay, next one is the Red Sea. They need to pass the Red Sea and that Red Sea, spiritually, that was their baptism. In us, we had overcome or we experienced this when we, were, when we experienced the water baptism. We were buried in our old life and now we are raised with our Lord Jesus Christ. Raised with a new life already. Han kumanga diay man an old life mo. Di agbiabiag nga mo. When we were buried, the old has gone and now the new has come in us. New spirit or new life in our Lord Jesus Christ. And after that, they need to enter the desert of Shur. I was not able to share this one before. And this desert of Shur is a place for them. They need to pass before they will enter the desert. It is a wall. From the name of sure, sure it means wall. They need to pass this wall for them to be distinguished that they are not really in that place of Egypt. But if they will pass this wall, wilderness of sure, okay, after the Red Sea, then they are in that place of desert Totally, they said that we are not already in that Egypt, but it will distinguish them that they are in that place of the desert. What is the importance of that place today? In this boundary, we must be out from this as we have this salvation because this wall will help us to distinguish what is right or wrong. 
For us Christians today, even though we tend to say, I am a Christian, but we still love this world, we still compromise, we are still, why we are able, we are still compromising, mabalin nga, still nga adata yung Egypt, we are not able to pass that, de that desert of sure, that wall, because that wall will help us to really distinguish that we don't belong to this world or Egypt. We are already in this desert. In another place, Migdol means the name or fortress or it is a stronghold. It is a wall to protect and distinguish them from the land of Egypt. We need these things in us. Though it's a place, but the spiritual meaning is that when we really passed over this wall, it will help us that my life belongs to God. My life don't belong to this world already. An nga Egypt. For almost 400 years, really, their life, talaga nga, it was marinated by the culture of the Egyptian cultures. But they need to live that old life that they have. That's why we need, they need to pass through the Red Sea to be baptized. They need to live their old life and to have new life with God. And even they need to pass through this desert of sure a wall. We must be out of this, this desert of sure to know how to distinguish God's time, God's day, God's money, evil, even the right or wrong. Today it is the Lord's day. Praise God. We are here. Amen. We're able to distinguish this is not our day, but it is the Lord's day. Can you tell to your seatmate, you are blessed. Yes, we are blessed that we are here in the right place, not in the outside. Han nga arejay mall, arejay outing. People make Sunday as their family day, but no, it is the Lord's day. When we know it is the Lord's day, we are able to distinguish. Now, praise God, we are able to pass with the wall. That's why we are distinguished. I am really a Christian, and I need to know that God's time God's money as well. When we are coming, we know that the money or we know how to give the tithes and our offering to God. Every blessing is not all for us, but we know what is the part or what is we are able to distinguish as well the offering that we are giving to our Lord Jesus Christ. As we know it and they are able to pass through the desert of sure and that's the time they are totally in the place of the desert or a new area in their life. This desert signifies today the church. In this church, it is a place for us to have power, for us to be transformed, to be changed. But in Egypt, they don't have hope, no life when they are in the place of Egypt. They are slaved. They really work. They don't have time to worship. But the moment that they are in the place of the desert, the church, it was a place for them to be renewed, to be transformed. So if anyone who is in Christ Jesus, God will raise their life. Amen. Anyone who is in Christ, he will change our lives. God will transform our lives. Amen. This should be our desire every time that we are coming. First, in what way? As they experience Mara. That Mara when they are in that place, three-day distance journey, they don't have water. Talaga nga na, yeah, na bisinda, okay, or they uh, na uwauda of water. Kaya dang aginom, but they, there was a no natural water. Why did God allow these things? God did not provide it immediately, but God wants to show who He is in their life. That Mara. That water is full, is not a sweet water. They cannot drink it. It's bitter. There are many bitterness in our life. But thank God, because of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, He turned that bitterness into sweet in our life. He take all the curse in our life. That's why God wants to show, I am the Jehovah Rapha who heals you. I am God Almighty. We have heard the identities of our Lord Jesus Christ. In your Bible, no awan, you can come to our office and we can give you. We are encouraged before we will read our Bible. Let us read 
what is the identities of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though it was stated there nga seven, but there are still a lot of identities of our Lord Jesus Christ when we know who God is in our life. No amu tayo ti Diyos nga sa pagsaserbihan tayo, we will be encouraged to know and to move on in our Christian life. So the moment that these Israelites were thirsty and they complained to Moses, and here comes Moses, what did he do? He cried out to the Lord. Every time nga, the good thing Israelites are complaining and coming to Moses, Moses, Moses is not arguing with the members, he's not also complaining as part as we are leaders, Christians, every time that we are being tested. The first thing that we must do is to cry out to God. Amen? To pray to God, Lord, help me with this problem. Help me with this situation. I do not know. In natin maitulong na complain tayo. Lord, apay man niya kastoy. Parehas na lang. In that time, we can see the leadership of Moses who continually cried out to God. May we also be like Moses in every moment in our life if we don't know what to do. We cannot carry every burden in us. Let us cry out to our Lord Jesus Christ. After that, they experienced the place of Elim. We are just having our review. In the place of Elim, they also experienced the 70 palm trees and the 12 springs. It means they experienced the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are 12 springs and the 12 springs, it flowed into the 70 palm trees. That's why the 70 palm trees grew up. We are considered to be a palm tree. A righteous one who needs to grow up and who needs to continually know more our Lord Jesus Christ. And also, they started to have the camp. Before, they were scattered, nagulu, the Israelites. But along the way in their journey, they started to follow the order of God. So there was the restoration of the order of God. They started to obey their leaders. They started to obey God in their time. And after that, God had given them the bread from heaven that is manna. What is this manna? Manna comes early in the morning with a Jew. Take note with a Jew. What is this Jew? This signifies the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every morning, every day, we need the grace of God. Amen? Those who wants to ask the grace of God, can we say amen? Yes, the grace of God is very important in us. Without the grace of God, we cannot do anything. Without the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we cannot accomplish and we cannot finish a day in us. The strength that God is giving you is all by the grace of God. The wisdom that God is giving you is all by the grace of God. And that grace, that manna comes with a Jew. And if the grace of God was given to us, we are able to listen and we are able to hunger for the word of God. This word of God will give us, will help us to grow more in our spiritual life. And we have heard all the things about this manna. That this manna, we need to take it early in the morning. Every day, we need to have this spiritual manna. This is our spiritual food to supply our spiritual needs. No ante yung mga physical food, kumapsut tayo. Same with the spiritual food. If we're not able to read the word of God, we will weak. We will be weakened and easily be tempted with the situation of this world. But thank God, because as He is giving us the Word of God, after that, He also has given us, what is that next? Water from the rock, in the place of Rephidim. This rock signifies our Lord Jesus Christ, and He needs to hit this water so that the Holy Spirit or the water will come out from that rock. Why did our Lord Jesus Christ give these things before they need to face this battle of the Amalekites? God has given first this water from the rock and manna, bread from heaven, because this will give, give them power to face battle in their life. This moment, let us go for our main passage, the battle with the Amalekites. Who are these Amalekites today? And how are we going to overcome these Amalekites in our life? This was the first war of the 
Israelites as they need to face these Amalekites. Can you say after me, Amalekites? These Amalekites in the Bible, who are they? First point, let us see the meaning of the Amalekites or Amalek. They are the descendants of Esau. And they are a nation described in the Hebrew as an enemy of the Israelites. Talaga nga, they really against these Israelites. They are the enemies of these Israelites. The descendants of Esau, let us see in the book of Genesis, chapter 36, verse 12. Esau's son, Eliphaz. Eliphaz was the first or the eldest son of Esau. Also had a concubine named Timna, who bore him Amalek. These were grandsons of Esau's wife, Ada. So from the descendant of Esau, here comes the Amalekites today. And the, these Amalekites are the enemies of the Israelites. So as they are going in their journey, the first thing they need to face are the Amalekites. Spiritually, who are these Amalekites in us today? It means a person who belongs to the body, old self or in short, these are our sinful natures. The old sinful nature of body is always against the new self. Those who have still sinful nature, can you raise your hand? Uh, yes, mabaina. <laughs> okay, most of us still. I mean, tayo even us. Awan ti taong awan pelan ti sinful nature na awan ti taong a perfecto nga. All was really, mabalin lang no, aradya ka langitin. But while we are still living in our flesh, in our body, these Amalekites are always there. That's why we need to always fight. These are always there to stop us, to hinder us, to destroy us. It is not a good thing. That's why we need to remove this in us. In their journey, before the Israelites experienced the war, they experienced first manna and water from the rock. Take note, apay nga kas jay ti pa nag, nangyari. Hanba nga mabalin nga, they need to face first the Amalekites and the next mana and the water from the rock? No. There is the significant event. And we can see without mana and without the water, the water from the rock, Amalekites will not arise. The Amalekites will not appear without the mana and the water from the rock. Same with us. If the word of God is weak in us, the Holy Spirit is weak in us, we cannot distinguish, we cannot determine our sinful nature. Mabalin nga ibagam nga, okay ak lang, normal lang aramid ang agbasul. Kasi, the word of God is weak to you. The word of God cannot teach you. The word of God, the Holy Spirit cannot convict you to tell that it's wrong. Iso nga kasapulan nga sinful nature should arise in us whether we like it or not. Why? That is the way for us to be sanctified. If we are still holding our sinful nature, we cannot arrive in that place of Canaan. That's why, praise God, it is good in the eyes of God that He allowed these Israelites to live in that place of desert for 40 years. Uray pagrigatan da, but that is a good side in the sight of God. Why? So that little by little, their sinful nature, sinful character will be removed. Han nga totally nga maikat da gito'y character tayo. But along the way, let this should be our desire. Little by little, He will remove all these sinful natures. As it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 6, So letting your sinful nature control your minds leads to death. This sinful nature in us, the sins in us will make us or will kill us, make our minds to death. But letting the sinful, the spirit control your mind leads you to life and peace. What do you like? Life or death? Life, yes. Nobody wants your death, but we need to have this life. How? We need then to let our sinful nature be controlled we must control, overcome. They should not control us, but we must control them. Verse 7, for the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It means against God. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will be. Talaga it will never 
obey this sinful nature, this sin will always against God. That's why, that's why those who are still, verse 8, those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. We, nev we can never please God if this sinful nature is in us. That's why this morning, let us open our heart. Yes, Lord, teach me. Show me what is the sinful nature, character that cannot please you. Kung maybe for you, you are okay. Everything is good. Ka your character, something is lacking in you. If you are not able to look or distinguish, the word of God already is not working in you. The Holy Spirit is weak to you. That's why we need first to be empowered with the word of God and with the Holy Spirit. Nung napiksaray to, ipakita natin sa sao ni Apo Diyos, day tati mading ar-aramidam. Nung napiksa to, Holy Spirit, King Kahi will sell, don't do that. Or do not continue on doing all these things. Our Christian lives, even sometimes, is unbiblical or sinful nature is strong. We don't know. But when we have a strong word of God and is empowered by the Holy Spirit, these Amalekites will appear this sinful nature will appear. Agpasalamat tayo if this will appear. Amen? So that we can settle and we will pray, remove this and we can move and move. Because if it's still the sinful nature is in us, we cannot grow, we cannot experience who Christ is in our life. If this sinful, sinful nature will arise, ah, madigayam de inaramit ko. You tend to say sorry to others. Lord, sorry. Us. Something's wrong. No, for you, it seems something is okay. All right. I think. Tut, tut. Lord, open my heart. Open my mind. I don't want to always be the same like this. We're almost a long time Christian. Even during the time when these Israelites complained because there was a lot of mana na umada. Mana manun, mana manun. Then God said, okay. I will give quail. But that quail was to satisfy their sinful nature. It's not to satisfy their spiritual nature before God. That's why God gave them every evening. Mangmanganda pa lang, sige, ipakan pa ni Apo Diyos. But why did they desire this quail? For their sinful natures to be satisfied. Let us not ask something that will satisfy our sinful nature. Amen. Rather, let us always ask something that will satisfy our spiritual nature from God. Though sometimes God will give because we, we ask. But in that time, may we learn from that and may we realize who God is in our life. Let us pray and strengthen more our hunger with God's word and Holy Spirit so that we can overcome these Amalekites in our life or our sinful nature. What is our sinful natures today? Okay. Let's open in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. Can we all read together? Go. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. What are these? Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, Outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like this. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. What are the characters do you have today from this? Mostly, mom, Makilablaban tayo pa iba? <laughs> Nariga, taanan. <laughs> or maminsan, jealousy at dapay no maminsan. Okay. Outburst of anger. Nag-ungot. Selfish ambition, drunkenness, envy. Others. These are the sinful nature. These are some of the sinful natures that holds us not to grow in our Christian life. That God wants us to remove. God is sanctifying us, purifying us so that we can experience our Lord Jesus Christ. Kunana, let me tell you it again. Anyone who have this will not inherit the kingdom of God. We will not take this as literal. Tano literal, awanti makapanjay langit. Even pastors cannot. If we will take it literal, if we have this, but it, what does it mean? They will not inherit 
and or they will not receive a reward in the kingdom of God. They will just be a civilian. But those who are really fighting, overcoming, praying, Lord, please remove this, remove this. When was the last time that you prayed, Lord, please, may you remove this character? Or okay lang, sige pa, okay lang, agbiaga ka kasi ito yung nga makiapak, nga maki... Nga pa, itararamidan tayo. But as it says, this doesn't please God. May we always have desire to always please our Lord Jesus Christ every day in our life. Whether we are studying as students, in the workplace, tayo in our business, make it our goal to please our Lord Jesus Christ. As what Paul said, whether we are in our body today now or in our glorious body, it should be our desire to please God every day when we are controlled by the Spirit of God. But when we are controlled by another spirit, we can never please our Lord Jesus Christ. So that is the Amalekites in us. Today, let us have our self-reflection. What are these Amalekites that we are still holding? What are these Amalekites that still we are taking good care nga dumakdakal pay? No, we need to cut it. And we need to overcome. In what way? As we move on to our second point. The way to overcome the Amalekites. Okay, how are we going to fight the army of the Amalek? It says in verse 9. Moses commanded Joshua, choose some men to go out and fight the army of Am Amalek for, for us. Tomorrow, I will stand at the top of the hill holding the staff of God in my hand. The staff, kanayon yung agaman ni Moses data. Yeah, staff ngayon sana to divide the Red Sea. It was also the same staff now that he is holding. How are we going to overcome the Amalekites? Through prayer. Can you tell through prayer? Yes. That is the importance of prayer in us. Without prayer, no one can overcome Amalekites. Like Joshua, he went out to overcome the battle while Moses was praying. The story is that Joshua was there fighting with the Amalekites, but he needs someone to pray for him. Moses. Moses was praying for him with the help of Aaron and Hur, who is holding his hands up. Imagine until sunset nga talaga, nabanugan iso na naging ato ti ima na. Who are the characters here? Joshua features the spirit. Moses features Jesus Christ, who is our best intercessor, who will fight for us. And Aaron and Hur features the Israelites. We are the Israelites today. We must be like Aaron and Hur who will continually intercede and pray for each other so that they can also overcome the, um, their Amalekites in their life. We cannot fight by our own. We cannot overcome our sinful nature by our own. But we can only overcome this through the help of our Lord Jesus Christ and even Joshua. There are four persons here who, you know, who were united to fight the battle of the Amalekites, even for us. When we fight this Amalekite sinful nature, we need the Spirit in us, the Spirit of God. We need Jesus Christ to intercede, and we need our co-believers in God to also intercede and help each one of us. As it says in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, Therefore, Jesus Christ is able and once and forever to save those who come to God through Him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. Amen. Okay. We have a best intercessor. No feel mo awa nagikakararaking ka? No. We have our Lord Jesus Christ who will always raise His hand and to pray for each one of us. And take note, as we desire to overcome this sinful nature, even in the Bible, in the history of the Israelites, they really also desire to remove these Amalekites in their generation. Spiritually, kanyatay, we need really to remove it. Even in the Bible, in the history of the Israelites, they want as well to remove, okay, remove all or to kill all these Amalekites. Why? These Amalekites are the enemies of these Israelites. These Amalekites will hinder the Israelites for them not to in enter the Canaan. As well for us, this sinful nature are our enemies that will hinder us not to receive a reward from God. It says in Exodus 
chapter 17, verse 14, he told this one to Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it because... I will completely blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Totally, God desired to remove, destroy these Amalekites in the generation of the Israelites. Before, it says completely, it's not a partial, but totally, he wants to destroy them. For us, even our sinful nature, let us desire, hala nga partial. Ikatam lang, Lord, dahi basit lang. Di bali, tataak lang mo't ngayon na experience na ito eh. Okay. And it will really hinder our spiritual life. Even though that is small, totally remove it. This is the reserve of God. Even in Deuteronomy, chapter 25, verses 17 to 19. Remember what the Amalekites did to you along the way when you came out of Egypt. When the Lord your God gives you rest from all the enemies around you in the land, He is giving you to possess as an inheritance. You shall blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Do not forget. Verse 19. Then the Lord your God gives you rest from all the enemies around you in the land is giving. You to possess as an inheritance. You shall blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. Do not forget. Okay, so that is really the instruction of God to them. You need to overcome all these things. And even during the time of Samuel, when Samuel is going to appoint Saul as the king, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1, Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you king over his people Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. So now Samuel is giving instruction to King Saul. What is that instruction? I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they weighed late or ambushed them as they came out from Egypt. Now go attack the Amalekites and totally destroy everything that belongs to them. Do not spare them, but put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys, everything. But did Saul do it? No. That was the failure of Saul. He was not able to do and obey. But really, God wants to kill all these Amalekites because these are the enemies of the Israelites. To contextualize that in our life today, as we are holding these Amalekites, God is not pleased. That's why this is also his longing. Why did God put these Israelites in the place of the desert? So that little by little, their sinful nature, their characters will be removed, will be sanctified until the end so that they can, re they can face God as a pure virgin being sanctified by our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we move on with the third part, point, what is the rule now of prayer? What is the importance of prayer? How is your prayer life today? How much do we pray in our life? Our Christian life prayer is very important. Aaron and Hur came to, to be the arms of Moses to help him not to put down his hands because of tiredness. Therefore, praying is possible with the help of other believers as well. Even Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ wanted his disciples to pray together. You need to pray. You need to pray. You need to pray. Okay. Let us not give up in praying. Amen. That is only the way for us to overcome these Amalekites. You cannot read textbooks how to overcome sinful natures. Maybe there are principles, standards that they will tell. But through the help of God, through prayer, He will empower each one of us so that we can overcome this. As this battle with Amalekites did not happen just one time, but it will be a battle from generation to generation. Fighting our sinful nature every day. Diba? Example, agbasa ang Bible no, bigat talaga, promise. Okay. O, kinabigatan na. Alam ni Bible mo, ay, agurada pa, aramidak, kung ano mo nabasa. 
Apanak ah, talaga ag church. No next time manan ag attendak. Okay, there is battle in our mind. Okay, that's why puna de mind may sa ano no bigat na lang aglaba ka pa yado pa yung ramidam. Okay, we need to fight this in our bat in our mind. Okay, so as long as we have our body, the amale continues to attack our physical, our sinful natures in us. Those who failed in the desert were failed by their physical desire. The first generation, few of them only entered Canaan, only the tribe of Joshua and Caleb, and the second generation entered. Why? They were able to overcome their sinful nature. However, thousands of people did not arrive, entered Canaan, because they still hold their sinful nature. They're still enjoying their life in the desert, enjoying whatever. But what is the greatest thing? The greatest thing is then the place of Canaan. Let us not open our eyes in that desert. That is just only a place for us to be sanctified. But the greatest treasure is in the place of Canaan. Canaan signifies or symbolizes our Lord Jesus Christ. The riches of Jesus Christ is in the place of Canaan. But God will not allow us to, to enter when we are still holding something that is not in line with our Lord Jesus Christ. So let us continually cry out to God, Lord, what is the rule of prayer? Through prayer, this will help us to stop all these things in us. Let's see in the book of Romans, one illustration. Even Paul, Paul was used by God mightily. Na usarmat ni Paul, to share the word of God. However, he also said that something is ruling in his life. Romans chapter 7, verse 14. Let us read all together. Romans 7, verse 14. Go. It's not with the law, for it is a spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. Okay, some, we are slave of sin before. Verse 15. I do not really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Is it right? And they kanta. Gusto kong bumait, pero di ko kayang. Kayat kong aramidan day tuwing amayat, ng apay nga day maditir aramidak. Let's continue, verse 16. But I know that what I am doing is wrong. This shows that I agree that the law is good. 17. So I am not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. So when the sinful nature is strong in us, are we just allowing ourselves to do sin? Or we need to stop? We need to fight. I must not do this. I should not do this. But when we allow, okay, just do all this thing, that sin living in us is the one who's doing already. Verse 18. And now, and I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. 19. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. <laughs> Mati garu dan apa yang pelanggan arah identiti tahu ini ya? Ngam dia mayat ngah dapat arah identiti tahu hantai yang ngah kayang maramid. When already the sinful nature is strong in us, that's why this should be our prayer, Lord. Help me to do what is really right in you, and help me not to do what is really wrong in your eyes, so that I want to please you throughout the day of my life. As we jump to verse twenty-three. But there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me slave to the sin that is still within me. 24. Oh, what a miserable person I am. In Bagani Paul, what a pitiful person am I. What a wretched man I am who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death. He was really so sad and not okay when sin is really reigning in him. Ngam ko nana, ayok kaasi akpay nga tao. Dapat may bagay tayo dahi tanok every time na lang kat arami din tayo since that will not please God. This will only come to us when the word of God is strong. 
okay. And verse 25. But, okay, let's read together. Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is? In my mind, I really want to obey God's law. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. Okay, because of our Lord Jesus Christ, He will enable us to overcome all these things in our life. Okay, amen. Okay, so dagisay daduma, they dapat ng aramiden tayo, kaya tayo mat ang aramiden through the help of Jesus Christ. And when we really fight, and when we really pray for this, no gamin mamingsan, kung kung atalaga kaya, because you don't pray for that. That character will not be really removed because really you don't desire for that character to be removed from you. And the last one, what will be the result of for the people who really prayed and helped people to overcome? Okay, the person who hold the hands of Moses was Hur. Hur, the Lord gave wisdom to Bezalel as one of the pillars who was the descendant of Hur to build up the tabernacle. Okay. The descendant of Hur was blessed because Hur was used by God to pray and even to intercede. Even Aaron, what happened to Aaron? Aaron became the line of the holy priest. That was the result of those people who helped intercede and pray for other people. So let us be like Aaron and Hur. Amen? We need to pray for others as well. If you are able to see the sinful nature of others, let us pray for them to overcome. And let us continually fight. And let us continually help each other. These ministries which they receive are shadows of the position and authority of heaven which is given to people who overcome the law of flesh. Not all people will be given this position. Only those who, are, who overcome their sinful nature will be able to receive this position, this authority, or these blessings coming from our Lord Jesus Christ. And the last, after they were able to overcome that battle, what did they raise or what did they do? Let's all read together again this passage in Exodus chapter 17, verses, uh, verse 15. 17, verse 15. Exodus 17, 15. Let's read. Moses built an altar there and named it Yahweh Nisi, which means the Lord is my banner. Amen. After their battle, it was the time for them to raise their flag. Why? Because they were able to overcome that battle. Raising a flag, it means bringing something to notice. If there is a war versus example, Philippines versus a country. China. <laughs> okay, the winner is uh, Philippines. What flag are you going to raise? Philippine flag, yes. Han tayo nga babalik erase di ay China. At naabak garud. Let us always raise our banner. Why? Jesus Christ is our victory. Jesus Christ is our banner who is always fighting for us to overcome the Amalekites in our life. Let us not be discouraged. Apa yun nga minsan? Okay. Your best enemy sometimes is yourself. Right? You need to overcome this. And with the help of our Lord Jesus Christ, and let us always raise up our banner. Our banner is our Lord Jesus Christ, who is always victorious and who overcome everything. To end with, with our message this morning, do we still have our sinful nature, sinful characters? Yes. But how are we, what are we doing on this? Are we doing something to be removed? Or, mas kakaro nga alagaan tayo tap no dumakal agbunga pay? No. We need to cut it through the word of God. We need to overcome, remove it. Tap no han pay nga agdumakal agbunga pay, umado pay. Okay. Let us not allow our Amalekites nga umado ti kalaban tayo. But little by little, let us kill every Amalekites. Patayin po natin yung mga Amalekita natin sa buhay natin. Our sinful nature, because it, this will never help us. Instead, this will, this will hinder us not to grow and not to be changed by our Lord Jesus Christ. Our last challenge this morning is that let us 
pray and cry out to His name to overcome the Amalekites or sinful natures in us. If we're going to stop, His hands will rest down and will surely not win. But let us always pray hard in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray hard for the sinful nature that we have so that God will change us, God will renew us, God will transform us from glory to glory. Sino ka tatang agsapa? We've been a long time Christian. Are we the same before? Or God had changed us, God had transformed us, and will continually change us. Let us just allow, open our hearts, our minds. Dagijay character tayo that will not please God. What are we doing? Are we watering it for that to grow more? This will hinder us not to grow. But little by little, let us fight, overcome this. Let us all bow our heads as the music is coming in front. Let us bow our heads and personally let us have our self-reflection. All of us still are holding something. Adapay ti sinful nature tayo. Adapay ti characters tayo that will not please God. Sometimes we tend to hate others. Sometimes we tend to be the enemies of others. Still jealousy is there. Pride is there. This humbleness is still there in us. Let us pray to God, Lord, remove these things. If you want more to inherit the kingdom of God, let us not always be the same Christian before. Maminsan nga mauma tayo, tibiyag tayo nga pare-parehas na lang. De ugali tayo kotahan nga mabalbaliwan. Let us cry out to God. God is always there to intercede. And little by little, these characters will be removed so that as long as we will grow, the more that we will be used by our Lord Jesus Christ. God will not allow us to experience kanaan when still the sinful nature in us is so strong. But if you desire to be used by God, if you desire to experience more our Lord Jesus Christ, please, God, let us cry out His name and let us pray, Lord, please remove this character, remove this bad character's behaviors that I have. And Lord, may your character be planted in me. May that love, joy, peace, understanding, patience, gentleness, self-control will be in our heart. As we sing this song, may this be our prayer to our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us continually ask, let us not allow our soul will be thirsty or dry, but it will be get wet by the Holy Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Forgive our sins. And as we call on Open the blind eyes, unlock the 
hands up and call to God this morning as well let us raise our hands and can we call out the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and let us cry out what are the things that hinder us not to grow what are the things that we cannot experience the riches of God still there are vices that we are holding still there are characters that are still help us not to know God jealousy or negative things in our minds, brightness, arrogance in us, this humbleness. Lord, let us cry out to God, confess it to God, and this sinful nature will be changed by the Spirit of God, by the character of God. God is not pleased, even though sometimes we worship Him, but this day we are all these, these things, all of our worship, our service is in vain, as we desire that every time we will please God. That's why this moment, let us cry out His name. And personally, let us utter and cry out and confess it to our Lord Jesus Christ so that we will overcome all, all these Amalekites in our life. Let us all raise our hands and all together, let's call upon His name. Let's go. Jesus! Jesus! Yes, Lord God, change us, Lord. Please, there are characters that don't please you. There are sinful nature that is still we're holding. Lord, we desire, oh God, remove it, oh God. We want to live a holy life. We want to live a pleasing life before you, oh God. We want to live a life, God, a life that will glorify you, oh God. That will not make it hard by our own. That's, that's why, Lord, we're asking. Empower us with the Holy Spirit. With your word, oh Lord God. Transform us, God, from glory to glory. We don't want to be this as person before. But every day in our Christian life, change us, oh Lord God. Help us to grow. Remove, oh Lord God, this negative attitude in us. Remove, oh Lord God, this bad characters in us. Bad behavior that we have, oh Lord God. May you change it with your spirit. We change it with the fruit of your Holy Spirit, oh Lord God. Yes, Jesus, hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, oh Lord. Thank you. You know who we are, oh God. You know us, oh Lord God. No other people cannot see our sinful nature, but you know it. Lord, we pray. Remove it, oh God. Help us to fight. Help us to overcome it, oh Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Be glorified, be exalted, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, oh God. Yes, oh Lord God, hear us from heaven. This is our prayer in our Christian life. Though we have this salvation, but sometimes we cannot really grow fast because we are holding still our sinful nature. But Lord, our prayer in our Christian life, little by little, may you remove it. Help us to overcome. And you may change us. Transform us from glory to glory, O oh Lord God. We don't want to always be the same as Christian before. But our prayer in the way that we talk, in our actions, in our minds, O oh God, we pray that we will always please you, God. There are many Amalekites, O oh Lord God, in us. But these Amalekites, we can overcome it, O oh God, through your help. 
as we go out later, oh God, it will never be the same person. But every day, God, you are changing us. We are going for maturity so that the more that we can experience you, oh God, we will always be a Christian, a big Christian, oh Lord God, to see, Lord God, situations in our life that will benefit us, oh Lord God. Be glorified, oh God, in this moment, Lord, our prayer. You have prepared something great for us. You will use us more, oh Lord God. As we face these battles, oh Lord God, we will always overcome because you are fighting for us. We will always raise our banner because you are our victory, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for everything. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.